Hey, good morning, everyone. We are down here at the Adler & Sons Bagging Warehouse facility in Gibsonia. And today we're gonna cover the basics of filter sock palletizing. So the basic process of compost filter sock is you are filling a mesh material. It's HDMFPP. It's a high density multi-filament polypropylene material. It's a plastic webbing that gets weaved and made into the fabric that you see here. Um, you start off basically by filling up this hopper and from that it comes off the stem onto this conveyor system and then you coil it into the box. So you start with just using aged wood chips. You use a mix of either like wood chips or fine particles or whatever, but you need something to filter out the material. Uh, the main use of silt sock is to use it on job sites. When they tear the earth up and they start ripping topsoil up, you disturb all the chemicals and everything underneath and the clay and all that stuff. Engineers, the DEP requires this compost filter sock to be put out along the contour of the land to make sure that there's no flooding or water doesn't get to where it should not be. Our medium, we call this filter sock compost material. And uh, what it is, it's aged chips that are grinded up into uh, about inch and a half maximum. When you have the filter material, and you make the sock, if you do it too much, the material will actually tear. I pre-measure everything to length so that whenever the guy on stem is running the material to the guy in the box, it's all to the right length of what we're selling. It is always within spec. I always strive on quality. So this is our raw sock material. This is how it comes to us up on these pallets. It's got a nice tight weave, a nice diamond pattern to it. You have a loader who is uh, loading the hopper with material. So you got one guy doing that responsibility. Then if you come over here, you have a guy who's running what we call the stem. He is the heart and soul of the operation because all the speed and all the productivity that you have of the product is off this guy. This is your uh, conveyor belt control, which runs the conveyor belt to feed the material. This guy's main responsibility is not only to get the sock to the guy in the box, but is also the quality control. The next stage is the hardest labor-wise is the box. This guy is responsible for coiling the material in the box and making sure that it he needs to relay with the guy on stem if it's too loose, if it's too tight, so he can adjust based on those standards. His job's just basically to coil it in the box and make the pallet look beautiful. So this is our Wolf Tech rotary arm wrapper. It is the Maserati of pallet wrappers. This thing is awesome. It comes with a uh, powered roll treble. Once he gets the pallet to the position where it's in the center of the rotary arm, we then wrap the pallet, shrink wrap it so that it's a finished product. You're supposed to have a stake every 10 feet. So every 10 feet of the sock, you need to have a stake. The 18s get six of them, and the 24 inch get four. As we got into this business, one of our own Ryan Rhodes, who you guys met on uh, previous videos, he has a woodworking shop at his house, and he's been making all of our stakes for us. So this is uh, from our trees, the trees that we cut. So. Uh, truly is a, a cradle to grave operation uh, where we have tried to figure out the best way to reuse, repurpose, and recycle our material from the mulch to the firewood. Another point uh, to make this job a little more enjoyable, we have a state-of-the-art uh, boom box. Oh, yeah. Maybe not so state-of-the-art, but uh, Target special. Hey, she's got Bluetooth, I hook her up to my phone and we all jam up all day. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Well, I run the stem. What I do is keep the consistent tension on the sock. That way when the people unload the pallets, they're not stretching it out and they're getting the size that they ordered. That auger that you see runs the whole way to the back of this hopper and the vibrator keeps the material falling down to this auger and then the auger pulls the material out and puts it in the sock. We have different size cones for the different sizes of sock. Gives you the correct diameter. First thing we do is turn the vibrator on which keeps all the material falling down to the auger giving us consistent feed. Then once Blaze is in the box and situated Turn on the hydraulics. Start feeding them soft. Whenever you're doing the eight inch sock, you just run it straight off of the stem. You need this cone for the 12 inch, which we're doing today. This is the 18 and the 24. What I'm doing now is we call it rucking the stem, which is putting the sock on, preparing. And when you're sliding this on, you wanna try not to uh, put the sock on top of itself too much, it will stretch it out. And once we slid the sock on, reinstall the cone, pull the sock over the cone. So this pallet that Blaze just palletized, it's uh, somewhere between 1,500 to 2,000 pounds. So depending on what size sock that you are making, eight inch, 12 inch, 18, 24 inch, generally they're all pretty similar, uh, but it's plus or minus 200 pounds. Definitely interesting. It's a little more labor intensive, I'd say, to palletize with a bag. Uh, rather than no bag at all. And although Blaze makes it look really easy, there could be 250 to 300 pounds of material up in the air over his head. So it's a lot more difficult than he makes it look. It's pretty cool when you, when you go up to these, you can feel the heat. Um, it is uh, compost material, so the piles are hot. Um, and that's another thing, when you're in the bag, the heat that's put off by the material, along with the hydraulics, everything moving, uh, it gets hot, it gets hot. Between all the diameter socks, there is a different palletization figuration for each of them. Um, 8 inch and 12 inch are, are what Blaze calls a cardio day because you're working fast. 8 inch is very quick, so you're, you're very, really sweating versus 18 and 24 inch. It's more of a leg day because it's very heavy and you have to physically exert a lot of energy into moving the sock. Blaze here, he's going to be getting married in the next couple weeks, so ex six weeks, so he's getting excited for that celebration. Yeah. We're excited for him. So it's nice when you have a, a full team because, like Blaze said, you allow the guy that's in the box to stay up there and kind of rest in between his breaks because it, it is physically demanding. Then you'll come over to this Wolf Tech control panel. Move it forward till you get it into position. This machine, everything's all parametric, so everything's all set up in terms of uh, the wrap, wrap configuration and speeds. It's extremely important on the wrapping configuration. Um, 
if your your configuration's not correct, your pallets will fall over. I'm a big believer with the fact that you have to shrink wrap every single pallet. Uh, one of the big things that some people will believe is that if it's in a sack, it doesn't need shrink wrap because it's already in a bag and all that kind of stuff. I've seen too many of these fall over just from inexperienced operators and everything along those lines. So the tighter the film, the more we put on, the more stable the pallet, the better the quality. If you touch a pallet, it should be able to be handled and moved at least five times because you're going to have, you know, us take it from here, stock it in the yard, then load it on a truck, then unload it, then the customer has to load it onto their truck or, you know, send it to someone else and then it's going to be moved again. This uh, stretch wrap, as you can see here, it has uh, one piece of the, the, the wrap along with four bands that are pre-set to close to act more like a rope structure. So this is a patented technology um, that makes the thick, you have the thickness of the stretch wrap, but those bands increase the strength by ah, probably at least four times. So it, it's a very cool technology. So typically when it's a crappy day, uh, we will just take the pallets and set them off to the side. And then at the end of the day, whether we do 20, 30, 40 pallets, we'll just do it all in one bunch. Um, on a tractor load, a full tractor semi trailer going down the road, we'll put 26 pallets and we're able to stay underweight. So it is pretty cool um, to see a, a truck going down the road with super sacks. I think it's, it's actually really pretty. It's like artwork. So we have uh, 16 foot of powered conveyors and then 12 foot of gravity rollers. So you can move this 2,000 pound pallet with ease. So right now, as we're, this whole facility here is, uh, basically we've, we've been uh, palletizing filter sock for almost a year now. And it is sharing the space right now with the bagging equipment for mulch bagging. So eventually what we plan to do, which we have it all kind of designed, um, there is a 60 foot conveyor that brings the mulch into this volumetric feeder. So we have it engineered another uh, conveyor that will convey the material over 20, 20 foot and feed directly into this filter sock hopper. So you're able to use the same outside 15 yard hopper and you don't have to keep loading this filter sock hopper bucket by bucket. So uh, thank you guys for joining us today. Glad we could go over the basics of filter sock palletization. Uh, if you're ever in need of filter sock, you know where to get it. We'll see you next time, guys.